What's going on Nitro gang? This is the oldest Nitro that I own and I can almost guarantee this is probably something none of you have ever seen before. This is a 1983 vintage Thunder Tiger Silver Fox. Check this out. Nothing but wildness from this nitro burning stump puller. What I can tell you for sure, the way things were done in the 1980s with Thunder Tiger and with Kyosho Nitros is nowhere close to the way things are done in modern day Nitro. Now, in this video, I will investigate the history on this. I will tell you where I got it, how much I paid for it, and we will take a look around this vintage chassis, learn about it, and then see what kind of condition it's in. This is something that almost no other YouTube channel will do, guys. But here with the Nitro Gang, I make sure to repair, restore vintage Nitros, put them back on the road, and make them great again. Special thanks to all the people that support this channel, my Patreon members, my channel members. We're on a mission to make another vintage Nitro great again. This is a 1983 one 8 scale Nitro buggy. Now the design, as you can tell, completely different from modern RCs. The most obvious feature, we have this external metal cage. Now it is true, this one is missing some of the body components. This is the radio box. Normally there is a radio box cover. So therefore, obviously it's not exposed and there usually is a figurine here on top. But other than that, for the most part, this is 100% complete as you would have it back in the 1980s. Now, 1983 was a year for probably the worst Corvette ever, or was that the year they uh, actually didn't come out, the Corvette 1983 model year? I think they skipped that one. Or was that 1982? I don't know. The Crossfire, I think that was the next year. But vintage Nitros, they don't care what year it is. You can never kill them. Another main feature that is unique about these older style chassis well, they were built using a metal ladder frame chassis, as you could tell right here. Now, people think the modern Savage was the first one to use vertical plate chassis. I wouldn't call this a vertical plate, but I think we could all agree that this is parallel, vertical, similar looking plates. Not really a plate, more like, I would say, a quarter inch by a quarter inch piece of aluminum, it looks like. Everything is screwed on to it. On the bottom here, running the entire drivetrain is a chain. Kind of interesting because as you can tell, they did know how to make proper dog bones. This is a four wheel drive chassis with the power from the differentials going through the dog bones. So it's kind of interesting they chose to use a chain instead of dog bones. But I guess at this time, you know, dog bone technology maybe wasn't what it is today. This is the composite fiber disc brake. We have the fuel tank in the rear. Engine is mounted transversely. Very similar to a lot of the old HPI RS4s. It really doesn't matter how you mount the engine as long as you can get some of the power to the chain. We have the radio box and we have a giant bumper here in the front. What about the suspension? This model uses what's known as semi-trailing arms. As I compress the front, you could see the trailing arms moving up and down. Now these shocks are not original to this chassis, but they do basically do the same exact function. In the rear, it looks like the previous owner has put on one of the cheapest set of Banggood aluminum shocks. These shocks are not the best. They do seem to have an average amount of motion. But obviously the shock oil in them is either not there or it's completely too thin for this application. I will try to put on a good set of probably Traxxas T-Max shocks because let's face it guys, any nitro can be fixed with some Traxxas part. I know it seems ironic, but that's the truth here guys. Now in the rear, let's go over some of the issues that I observed so far. Fuel tank. So let me show you what the fuel tank setup looks like. So you have a fuel tank grommet here if you pull it out 
you just have you know the fuel pickup over here it's weird they didn't attach a fuel filter to the pickup they could have easily attached the fuel filter but whatever that's what it is this fuel tank pickup is very similar to the way fit scale rcs use there's like a rubber grommet and uh an exhaust and the fuel pickup uh system so almost the same thing now the main problem is the fuel tank is completely cracked if i compress it over here you could see the fuel tank is it's basically cracked like a ritz cracker take my word for it it's useless i will try to repair this with once again a traxxas revo fuel tank i think it will um it will probably fit here interesting way they have the fuel tank mounted as you could tell there's two screws here it looks like if you remove the screws the fuel tank just slides out to the side it looks to be dimension wise identical to what a traxxas revo fuel tank would be like now from the top let's take a look at the fuel system itself we have a giant this is called a soup can muffler you guys uh want to take a guess why this is called a soup can muffler it's because it's literally almost the size of a can of soup okay maybe a can of soda who the hell knows what you want to call it it's a soup can metal muffler that's what it is now we have a remote high speed needle valve over here interesting design because obviously the high speed needle is all the way over here guys and guess what it's probably almost impossible to reach because the brake linkage is also routed right next to it so i don't know how you would actually turn this it's it's not very comfortable so we have a remote high speed needle valve very similar to the way airplane engines were designed at the time obviously if you have a propeller spinning on your airplane prop you don't want to get your fingers right next to the airplane so they often had a remote high speed needle valve adjustment now this model has metal spur gear pretty good setup let me roll it forward i would say friction wise for a chain this is probably as good as it's going to get obviously this is nowhere close to the friction you would have with a proper dog bone setup or maybe even belt drive system but it does roll relatively freely right like if i push it it rolls somewhat the wheels i did notice these are the original spike wheels it looks like absolutely no runtime on them at all all of them look at this no runtime at all on the wheels i honestly don't even know if this thing was ever run notice they do not sit evenly on the bead it doesn't look like they're even supposed to be glued because if i pull this tire back the bead on the rim isn't what i normally expect to see in a modern rc car so i'm pretty sure these are just supposed to sit here and maybe over time it's possible the rubber expanded maybe something happened i don't know although rubber usually doesn't expand it actually shrinks over time so that's kind of a mystery to me top down view here in the front we have the differential we have pretty much a direct steering setup there is a built-in servo saver interesting feature check this out i'm pointing to it right here this is the belt tensioner so as you move the car the belt tensioner actually does move let me show you guys how it looks from this side so it's a spring-loaded belt tensioner if i move it here from the rear you guys could see this bolt sliding up and down pretty clever system it's pretty generic you know everything is metal on these chassis literally even the the shock standoffs are are metal um out drives from the differentials metal dog bones metal interesting design feature here in the back as i compress the suspension check this out it looks like this is designed to be a dirt protector i don't know really why um they would have to protect the dog bone from from dirt really but uh, we'll take a look at a review later on and we'll see how these things actually drove when they were new from an actual RC car magazine in a little bit. Semi-trailing arm suspension, I would say, you know, it's, it's effective if anything. Is it good? We're going to have to drive it. This is pure 1980s technology over here. So I don't think any of us here really have driven a car like this. I know some viewers on the channel have but I personally have not. In terms of electronics, we just have two pretty standard generic servos. I have to put in a uh, receiver radio and then we will be able to fire this thing up. Now, motor-wise, very interesting. I bet we all wanna talk about the motor, right? This is a 0.21 size Royal engine. 
Now, I did some research, I was able to find the original picture in a 1986 magazine. Take a look at it right now. The most interesting feature is the fact that it's actually an ABC design. Now, even HPI during the mid 90s and even early 2000s came with ABM designs. So this motor, I have no doubt, has adequate compression. I've already tested it myself. Here is the flywheel. I'll spin it a little bit. And I actually can't even spin it with one finger. Motor is not seized, it has very good compression. ABC baby, that's what you want, okay? ABC one, two, three, as they say. Here is the entire list of Thunder Tiger 1.8 Nitro buggies. All the way from newest ones, the EB4, and then all the way down to the one we have, the Silver Fox, 1983. There was also a slightly newer model in 1984 called the Silver Fox Gold Edition. Let's click the one we have. Introduced by Thunder Tiger, 1983, the four-wheel drive Silver Fox buggy came factory assembled requiring an engine and radio system to be purchased separately. That makes sense. Chain driven four wheel drive, the model is based on an alloy frame chassis with welded roll cage, bevel gear type differentials, fiberglass reinforced nylon trailing arm suspension, coil spring over oil filled dampers, dog bone drive shafts, and bushings with ball bearings for the wheels. This is what it would have looked like originally. Now, the one that I have is obviously missing this cover and the driver figurine. Otherwise, what I have seems to be complete other than a lack of stickers. The original shocks don't look that much different from modern shocks. I think I'll be able to find a set of shocks that fit normally. Now what I do notice that's different about mine, these wheels seem to be very well seated on the bead. I'm gonna have to figure out what to do about my wheels. It might still be drivable, we will see. Here's a picture of the box that would have come in. Interesting that it says for 0.19 to 0.21 engine. Today, all .19 engines, especially Dynamite, they're small block engines. This buggy is clearly designed for a .21 size engine. Top down view, exactly as mine is, minus the radio box cover. This motor, I don't recognize it. We don't have this cooling head. But obviously, since people got their own motors at the time period, there's also no way to tell. Here's a good picture of what the suspension would look like. The semi-trailing arm, so you have a lower one and an upper arm the dog bone, and basically the wheels mount, there you go. Kind of like, I would call this cantilever style suspension. Um, if you want, really kind of like the Revo, the inboard shocks, but this is completely different because suspension arms themselves are totally different than a Revo. Now, as a surprise, I was also able to find an actual vintage RC magazine article about this. So here it is. It was sold by a store called Hobby Shack. The Silver Fox. Check this out. Nothing but wildness from this nitro burning stump puller. I like how they describe the guys. Nitro burning stump puller. It's quite a sickening description. Let's take a look around the article. I've zoomed in. This is a 1986 RC Car Action magazine. Bottom of the pictures, let me read the description here. The Silver Fox is virtually unstoppable. Mud, snow, and rocks were no obstacles for the formidable fox. I like how that sounds as well, guys. Okay, so let's see what else. Uh, we're gonna read some of this, a little bit interesting information over here. The fine art of miniature off-roading or neighborhood intimidation, depending on your perspective, has achieved new heights with the introduction of the new breed of large displacement gas-powered iron. These cars are the Goliaths among the Philistines Man, what kind of words are they using, man? I think you had to have like a uh, PhD level uh, reading skills at this time. I'm just kidding around, guys. Let's continue. They ask no quarter. What does this mean? They ask no quarter? I've never heard of that phrase. It must be a 1980s phrase. They ask no quarter simply because it's unnecessary. They merely forage through whatever looms in their paths. They are exciting, purposeful, and downright gems of design. But I guess something like this would have been very, very cool in the 1980s. And it, in fact, still is very, very cool today. Let's continue with the rest of this. The Thunder Tiger Silver Fox, marketed by Hobby Shack, typifies the breed. It's nearly 8 pounds of weight. It's packaged in a sturdy aluminum frame and powered by a .21 engine. 
which is one of the largest sizes used in RC cars. Wow. I love that description. Oh, we flipped the page, unfortunately. What the hell is this? Some electric RC. We, we don't care about that. Let's go back. Oh, man. Hold on. Are these pictures of old RC engines? It's interesting that this OS engine has exactly the same cooling head as the one we have. Notice the way carbs were made at this time period. They were almost all kind of like airplane style carbs where you had um, an external remote high speed needle valve. In fact, the one that I have, the low speed needle is mounted exactly the same. This is a picture of the starter. I'm going to read this. An electric starter with a donut type rubber ring is needed to start any gas off-roader. So it's basically a wheel kind of like you would use on a plane, attached to a 12 volt starter. You put this under the ladder frame chassis and it spins the flywheel for you. Look at this little interesting, uh, I guess, advertisement over here. Unrelated to the video I'm doing now, it says it's gnarly. The pace setter one quarter scale off-road racer, Grizzly. Man, look at this guy with the beard holding it. Sickening. I wish I could get one of these. These look like actual gas RCs, guys. This legit looks like a gas, a non-nitro. But it's okay. Let's flip a couple pages, see what else we got. We got a Kyosho Optima, some vintage uh, stuff over here. At this time period, there was still a lot of electrics. Electrics are very, very popular at this time period. Still, you can see literally we have the MRC Tamiya Fox. Many of you guys have been in the hobby for a long time. You would know that these, these were basically the popular cars during the time period. What's this over here? Associated Electric and uh, some more stuff. A lot of this was also black and white. We have some electric motors and uh, stuff like that. Let's see. What's new? Well, all of this is old now. But I guess at one time it was new. Cox Hobbies. Turbo Scorpion. Now that is cool. I've never seen one of these uh, go on sale ever. Now here is a picture of the engine I referenced earlier. The one that we have. We're looking at it right over here. I'm going to also do a little more of a zoom in on it. Right here, Royal Point 21 ABC car engine. This was brand new at the time, guys. Uh, irony is, it's the same exact cooling head as the OS motors. All right, that's what it is. That's our look at this magazine. If you guys want to see the first cover page, let's see what the cover page looks like. Old RC car action magazine. This is interesting. This is hard work. Need to fire up better. She say she wanna dance, but she don't know how to move. Nitro World Order. Nitro World Order.